I'm Hope, and I'm from Waterworks Visual Art Center, and we're here today in Winston-Salem in the studio of Alex Hitchcock. She's a print artist. She works with gel prints. Um, Alex, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started. Okay. Yeah, I do some gel prints now. That's what's in the show at Waterworks, gelatin plate prints. But I've done all kinds of things, oil painting, drawing, all kinds of printmaking. So anyway, <clears throat> I've been working with art ever since I got a BFA and a master's in college. And um, and as a kid, my mother was an artist, so I just did an art thing. <clears throat> so um, um, the work that's at Waterworks, um, they're all gelatin prints, and some of them are just prints, and some I've added colored pencil to, to enhance and stuff. <clears throat> so if you get up close to them, maybe you can tell what I've done. And generally, they're all about natural images, whether mm -hmm. it's um, birds and uh, frogs and stuff like that, mm -hmm. or um, and with uh, <clears throat> uh, things that look like leaves or um, uh, weeds or whatever. And I basically pick the imagery just instinctually. Uh, sometimes I'm thinking about endangered species, but generally I actually just go with images that <clears throat> just speak to me in some way, and it may not be very intellectual. It's just kind of uh, instinctual. And um, I collect a lot of images, like, you know, tear things out of magazines and calendars and whatnot, just in case I might want to remember it or think about it. I can draw um, an image and then <clears throat> cut it out on my cutting board here with an X-Acto knife on Mylar, which I forgot to put over there. Um, you know, like a piece of Mylar like this, mm -hmm. or even one that's frosted. Anyway. <clears throat> So I basically cut out shapes because with this process, you lay down shapes like stencils. So I make my own stencils. Sometimes it's from an image someone else did. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's from a drawing I did. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, so these are just a little sample. So um, it's just a method of printmaking where you don't have to have a press or a lot of equipment, so you can do it on your kitchen table. If I'm you have curious to. about that. The yeah. gelatin that you, you put the ink on the gelatin. Yeah, I'm going to show that. Okay. Because right. now, originally, it was invented in the 70s to work with children and uh -huh. use, you know, it was a simple method. But um, lots of artists have, have used it for all kinds of things. And <clears throat> originally, you had to make your own gelatin. Mm -hmm. So you use Knox gelatin, gotcha. <laughs> and you uh, cook it up. Uh -huh. And make it into gel. You pour it into a, a, a tray, tray or yeah. a, or a clay mold, uh -huh. so that it's contained. And I've done that. Mm -hmm. and you can make them any size. Mm -hmm. But now Dick Blick and some other places let you. You know, you can buy one. So see, yeah. like, see this is uh -huh. like it's like rubber, gotcha. but it's it's uh, made from petroleum. Mm -hmm. And so the advantage of this is it lasts a long time and doesn't yeah. disintegrate. And you can wash it. You can wash the other kind too. And you can get them in different sizes. So. I have resorted to this because I can count on it not right. being messed up. And so what I do is ahead of time, I make I have it on a sheet and I have marked where my paper is going to be put down. Because mm -hmm. you could just put a single piece down, mm -hmm. raise it, and that's your print. It won't be very complex. It'll have practically nothing going on. So right. I know that I'm going to put the same piece of paper down many, many times. Mm -hmm. So I pre- cut or torn the paper to fit the mark here. So I always know where to put it down mm -hmm. each and every time on this, you know. So I have many, many layers on one. So for instance, yesterday I did this. It's not finished, but um, it started with yellow mm -hmm. over the whole thing. Then I laid down some stencil shapes and did, did blue and then eventually did ochre. And so there's a different blend of inks on top of each other. And that's where the that's where it's very much like all printmaking. All printmaking, you have to think in terms of not only a reversal, mm -hmm. but if you want to do more than just black, let's say, if you want to do many colors, they're all on top of each other. And you have to plan a little. Mm -hmm. With other kinds of printmaking, you plan a lot. But anyway, um, you have to think in reverse, and you have to figure out what will happen to the different colors? We all know that like yellow and blue makes green, right. but sometimes people aren't sure about some other mixes. What if the yellow is kind of a brownish yellow? And what if the green is kind of a, uh, a, a bluish green? 
you know, what will that color be when they're blended? And you can always do trials on blank pieces of paper, but you can also learn by just doing and, <clears throat> and expecting um, surprises sometimes. So for instance, with this, I'm using non-toxic inks, Akua, and I stir it up, I bring some out here, like you would for any kind of printmaking. Oops. I spread it somewhat evenly so that it will be ready to roll. And anyone who's done any printmaking knows this stuff, but if you've never done it, it's kind of foreign. And um, these are little rollers you can buy, all different sizes. So people who do wood cuts and linoleum cuts and all of that would use similar method with rolling and ink and stuff. So here we are with the gelatin print though. I haven't cut into it or anything. Right. Um, you can't cut into it. You're not allowed to. I mean, it would ruin it. Right. So it's not like wood cuts and linoleum prints that way. You can't cut. And you can't draw on it either. So you're really left with shapes that you put on it. So here I am. I'm going to roll out. I just, you know, just arbitrarily decided I'd start with yellow on this one. And it does make roller marks on the plate, and you have to decide if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Or you can keep trying to get it smoother. Right. One reason some people like gelatin prints, and I do too, is because, oddly enough, you don't have total control. <laughs> Other kinds of printmaking, like etching, lithography, woodcut, people are really like to have total control so that they have everything precisely lined up and they know exactly what's going to happen and they plan ahead. But I am not that kind of person, actually. I like accidents to happen uh -huh. and strange things to happen. Uh -huh. I want to I want to learn and be able to predict some so it's not total chaos. Right. But um, because it's fairly quick, basically you just use up a lot of paper and um, things good things can happen. So let's say on this, I pulled out a couple stencils. So here's one that I cut out a while back. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to arbitrarily lay that down. I'm going to lay, no, maybe I'll do the bird next. And I'll save that one. Okay, so here's the first layer. And I put a little X on my paper to know that I'll always put it on that corner so that I'll, so I won't get confused what's upside down and what's right side up and all that stuff. I'm lining it up with the corners. And then I rub it with my hands. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't go through a press, pressure of the press. Right. Um, and people say, well, why don't you just do it on the flat plexiglass? Or something? And I think the reason the gelatin was created was because it was soft yeah. and slightly bouncy. Mm -hmm. So that your hand can kind of press right. your shape. Mm -hmm. And anything else you decide to put on there that's going to add texture, which I can show in a second. So now I lift it, and there it be. Of course, it's that way. Mm -hmm. So why are these white? Because I blocked the ink with the stencils before I put the paper down. And I knew that would happen just because I've done it before. Mm -hmm. So that's how you get white. So if you want the white paper to show up, yep. you better put something down that will let that white stay. Otherwise, the whole thing would have been yellow first. And I'm going to remove these stencils because I'm going to do something different on that same piece of paper. Mm -hmm. um, and I have I water. Clean it. Yes. You just wipe it with water. Yeah, here we go. I'm going to wipe it. off that ink that's on there and use a different. I don't want the same image over again. Now I know it looks stained, and that just happens. Mm -hmm. And when I really want to clean it, I use a little soap. But this will probably be good enough for now. Um, dry it off a little bit. They just stay put on that You can put any shapes down that you, you want. It yeah, like they just can't be too thick, and they can't be too pointy or oh, that yes. way. Now. You can do things like put a real um, feather down, or mm -hmm. there's other things over here I'll show you. So let me try, um, let me try a different color. Let me try red, which I rolled out yesterday. So 
know, I have to remember, okay, thing was here, bird was there. Mm -hmm. Let me just do half thread. It'll probably look kind of pinkish because it's so thin. Because I had, I added transparency okay. gel stuff to it. Uh -huh. um, let me do, oh, I know, I'll do the other side blue. Any point, do you ever combine these with drawing or, you know, any well, of the, uh, other than maybe the, the pencil? The well, the um, <clears throat> you can't draw on this, right? right. but you I could mean, draw yeah. on your paper first and then do oh, ink yeah, on top, yeah, or yeah. wait till you've done your prints, let the ink dry, which doesn't take too long, mm -hmm. and then draw on top of it with mm -hmm. anything, inked or um, yeah, colored pencil like mm -hmm. I do. And uh, yeah, so you could... You can just use it as one layer of color right. or some, you know, or shapes oh, yeah. for whatever purpose you want. It's pretty flexible. Yeah. Okay, so I've got my thing there, the bird there. Let me see if I want to add on. Okay, let's see what happens if I add a real feather. A lot of people do do that. It's always handy to collect stuff like feathers. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That down and then um, I'm gonna add <clears throat> I can add other things like a little bit of netting. Mm -hmm. A little bit of string. Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay. Put it back, line up my corners again. And unlike any other kind of printing, these go really fast. Right. I That's know right. I used to do like You've done a lot it of printing before, oh, and that uh -huh. takes forever. You yeah. have to carve, and you, you know, even oh, yeah. when you're doing the printing, you have to, right. between colors. Yeah, once you're ready. Once you yeah. have your inks, your stencils set out, and your paper cut, then it can go fast. Yeah. You better have a whole lot of paper because you might want to keep going. Right. The stencil cutting can take a little time, mm -hmm. depending on how detailed it is. Mm -hmm. And when you do cut the stencil, it's handy. You should probably notice that some are the actual form cut out, but then you want to make sure that the cutout part you save also. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So oh, that yeah. in case you want to use that yeah. mm -hmm. as a um, fill-in stencil. Yeah. In reverse, so to speak. Okay, let's see what happened. Okay, there's the feather. See the yellow feather? And but it's always a silhouette. It's, you're not right. going to see details in it. Right. Yep. Um, and the netting made this happen. Mm -hmm. And and now we've got the blue um, for, uh, the plant. Mm -hmm was white part of it's now blue because the blue ink filled in the white right. and then there's green here because whatever was blue mm -hmm. became green and now that's more purpley the bird mm -hmm. even though it was white but then it had pink on it but then it had a little blue on it yep. so all those layers so it's really fun yeah. and i have to say it's not only is it easy to figure out what i did after the fact mm -hmm. because when you look at it you're like okay, which layer like, was first you want to replicate those I mean, you can replicate the color. You but can. You don't. <laughs> the layering, you may not remember what came first, second, third. Right. Like right. that. Um, I collect all kinds of things, like you know, Bermuda grass, mm -hmm. laying it down. Oh, mm -hmm. I know that's in one of these. That's over here. So this, this was the Bermuda grass what made that weed. On the bird? The, yeah. Okay. That was because. First, that bird was here, <clears throat> and um, I had put that on there plus this, right? Mm -hmm. And so once I put that down, I decided once those were still on there, mm -hmm. when I lifted the stencils, it had that bubbly look. Oh. And so I did what we call a ghost print. Uh -huh. 
So instead of cleaning off the gel and mm -hmm. inking it up again, I laid a new piece of paper down on it mm -hmm. to capture the bubble look. And it was more subtle. Yeah. So then I made sure whatever else I did on here was pretty subtle, mm -hmm. not too strong so that you could still see all that. Yeah. <coughs> and often that's more fun, mm -hmm. the ghost print. So another reason why you have to have lots of paper. Exactly. <laughs> so you can do that stuff at the last minute. So see, for instance, here now, uh -huh. I could put, I just don't have another piece of paper. I, if I laid clean paper on this as is before I clean it, mm -hmm you would get that uh, more subtle image of the netting, the feather, and the string, yeah. and it would look different. Yeah. And then I could you, keep, keep on and keep on. Yeah. <clears throat> what so, makes you, when you put the figures of like um, humans on there, oh, yeah. is there any re rhyme or reason, or did yeah. you just think the composition was good? <clears throat> well, I, I had, I did add figures, and I still do some, mm -hmm. to these abstract uh, fields of of uh, animals and um, mm -hmm. things because I just feel like there's this element of the person in our world right. that is either coexisting well, mm -hmm. lost, searching, on a journey, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. And they're sort of, they're not clothed. They're, mm -hmm. they're, it's not always clear if they're male or female. They're just a human form. Oh, yeah. And it is a silhouette, so there's no mm -hmm. detail, detail there right, either. Right. And uh, they're sometimes swimming, looking like they're swimming or dancing mm -hmm. or just in an odd kind of momentary pose mm -hmm. that was unconscious. I don't know if that really explains much. No, that's great. Oh, I <clears throat> so how long have you been in this studio? Actually, this is pretty new. Uh -huh. uh, we all, as a group, found it with a great landlord mm -hmm. uh, several months ago. And it's taken a while to fix up our spaces, get things coordinated, <laughs> but it's really hard to find studio space oh, yes. anywhere outside your home, like it's mm -hmm. really hard, it's affordable, and even then, um, even if you're willing to pay more, a lot of them are kind of awkward, like artists mm -hmm. want crummy floors, for instance, exactly. great to have wood, too. Oh my God. floors that you don't have to worry about spilling exactly. on, and you don't want it to be this fancy thing. <clears throat> so you don't want a renovated space exactly. because then they'll charge too much and exactly. we don't really want that anyway. No, 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 no. So, so this used to, it seems like it used to be a garage. Or something. It did. <laughs> ah, and we loved garage doors too because uh -huh. you could move in big things and big windows. So mm -hmm. it was uh, it was a, a sign painting place for a while. And before that, it was some kind of car and boat or truck and boat sailing, mm -hmm. selling place. And I don't know what all. Yeah. <clears throat> but nice. we're very happy with it. Well, before we end this, yeah. I would like to ask if you if you could say anything to anyone who wants to get started in, in art or who has a feeling that they want to be creative, uh -huh. how, what would you say to them? Okay. I think there's at least two ways to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't sound like much. <laughs> One is to uh, uh, take a class, mm -hmm. either at a local arts council class, mm -hmm. maybe several. <clears throat> or if you really want to dig in, mm -hmm. see if you can sign up for a college class that's a whole semester. Mm -hmm. um, audit it, you don't have to get graded. Right. And I would have people, when I taught at Wake, mm -hmm. you know, if I had space for them, I'd let them in. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then, you know, you do all the work and you require the critiques, but you don't have to worry about a grade if you're just auditing. Yeah. I'm not getting a degree. Um, <clears throat> so that's, that's sort of the methodical way of learning techniques and things from other people. Mm -hmm. But the other way is what children do, mm -hmm. or and you can be a child as an adult mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. mentally. <laughs> you can just um, uh, have a few pieces of material. You don't have to have a whole lot of stuff and just start playing around. Yeah. Now you may feel like you don't know enough or that you're lost. So part of that is just confidence. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, there's a lot of self-taught artists who just um, started playing around mm -hmm. and and had enough uh, imaginative ideas they just wanted to try them out. Mm -hmm. But it is e eventually useful probably to get together with some other artists or mm -hmm. to take some classes to f discover things you hadn't thought of, techniques or materials or how to use this or that. Mm -hmm. You can get really frustrated um, starting with some materials like watercolor. Mm -hmm. For instance, if you've had no instruction in that 
it can be very, um, it can be a big mess immediately. And so you don't know why. And that's what happened to me when I was in college because I didn't take a class in watercolor. I just mm -hmm. saw some and I thought, oh. So I tried some myself, but I didn't understand anything about it. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, I had a crying fit and all this because <laughs> nothing was working. <laughs> but um, there's plenty of books, of course, uh, of all different levels. And then there's plenty of YouTubes. Oh, yeah. But, of course, there's also a lot of people out there <clears throat> everywhere who will teach in a way that might not be helpful to you. Right. So you have to be careful. Some people want you only to work with their method and in their style. And that is very repressive and rigid. And so it doesn't really help you blossom. Mm -hmm. It makes you think you just have to be obedient and there's only one way to do things. <laughs> and so I don't teach that way. Right. But <clears throat> um, you just have to be careful of other people's judgments right. and someone else telling you you have to do things a certain way. Right. So you use people and courses as a resource mm -hmm to help you understand what's out there and how to use materials and, and different techniques that could be useful. Yep. And then you use them how you want. Right. Yep. Um, yeah. I think this has been great and we really appreciate you doing this. <laughs> um, hopefully we will have more virtual stuff in the future that we mm -hmm. definitely I appreciate you keeping my work up. Here. Yes, so, no. Why would you direct everybody who comes in to see it and experience it? Yes. Um, and um, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, it was fun. Thank you.